This is the Faith, Family, and Fundamentals with Fran podcast. Hey, family. Welcome to Faith, Family, and Fundamentals with Fran. Thank you for lending me your ears today. I choose happiness. I choose to speak positive affirmations and words of comfort where there is so much pain, stress, and disappointment. I have made a conscious decision to represent our Father, the one who promised never to leave nor forsake us. I believe that so much is happening in this world that we become distracted from God's promise never to leave nor forsake us. Today, I want to remind us that even in the midst of chaos, many struggles, toils, and snares, God is still in control and he wants us to keep our eyes on him. In Proverbs 4th chapter, the 20th verse, My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. You see, in his word, he admonished us. Look not to the left, nor to the right, but keep your eyes and ears fully focused on him. I cannot talk about focus without reminding you of Lot's wife, who was so enamored with the rut and mess she was leaving behind that even after being told to look forward and focus on what's ahead, she turned to take a final glance and immediately turned into a pillar of salt. God's word has said, if you look back, you will not be fit for the kingdom. So I warn you today, in the midst of life's many storms, affix your eyes along with your whole heart and all of your attention on him because he sent his son to save all in this world. That means God gave his only son to die for a troubled, sinful world. However, it seems too many of us are willing to love this world and the many things in it to our own self-sabotaging death. Too often we want to keep our eyes on all that's going on in this big wide world rather than the one who is in complete control. We want to zone in on the matters that seem interesting entertaining and fulfilling so much so that we will negate God and his word, which really means leaving our souls undone. And the single part that gives me cause for pause is that all that we cleave hold to in the name of I love this world continue to devastate, disregard and distance all who are so strongly attached to this world from God and truly being able to live our best lives. Too many of us live as if the world loves us, but the world loves no one. And the enemy who is in opposition to all that is good, godly, and righteous seeks to claim each soul as he is determined to sift us as wheat. But God But for the grace and mercies of God, our souls would be forever condemned to eternal damnation. Without him, we'd be forever lost because we love the world more than we love our own well-being, better than we love our own lives. Too many of us love this world so much that some would negate God to remain a part of an illusion of fun even while the practices, matters, and things of the world are killing us, slowly, softly killing us. My goal today is to remind you that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You must know that God has made a way of escape for each of us, which means we are no longer in bondage to sin, but victorious citizens of the kingdom of God. So we must walk in the newness of the liberty that only God gives. You see, wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And whomever the sun set free is free indeed. God's word has warned us in Galatians 5th chapter and the first verse 
Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Such sure words remind us that prior to God's sacrifice of his own son, we were all in bondage. But for the grace of God, we are now free from the bondage of sin and must remain steadfast in the newness of who God has called us to be. That is, if we plan to remain free from bondage, You see, God has allowed us freedom, but oftentimes we get ourselves re-entangled on only an illusion of what looks good. You know, they say the grass is greener. I promise the grass is green wherever you water it. And watering it means let God do the watering. Therefore, looking back is reckless and could prove fatal, as in the case of Lot's wife. Which brings me back to a troubling but honest reality. As Lot and his family lived in Sodom and Gomorrah, a rebellious, idolatrous, disobedient, disrespectful, and discounting to God generation. When I look closely, Sodom and Gomorrah were a direct duplicate of our world today as they were two legendary biblical cities destroyed by God for their wickedness. Their story parallels the Genesis flood narrative in its theme of God's anger provoked by man's sin. God's word has posed the most poignant question. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Of course, his grace is sufficient. But how much more shall we no longer serve sin as the same word of God has made it known that after that the Holy Ghost has come, we shall have power over sin. The same sin that brings on death and destruction. So if the crucifixion of Christ was carried out to free each of us from sin, death, hell, and the grave, why then do so many choose to remain servants? to sin? How can we continue to flirt with the enemy, knowing that he is in the business of snatching the victory that God has already freely given to us? You see, grace is God's life, power, and righteousness given to us by unmerited favor. Yes, the grace of God is more than salvation, but also everything we need, everything we need for life, and godliness. The definition of grace is God's life, power, and righteousness given to us by unmerited favor. It is through grace that God works effective change in our hearts and lives. Grace gives us a new life which is not condemned by God. Through God's grace, we are forgiven transforming our thinking, resulting in the renewal of our minds and hearts. Through grace, we live the kind of life that God would like every one of his children to experience. The grace of God saves us, justifies us, sanctifies and empowers us to live a separated life, even in this troubled world, in the midst of all that is unholy. You see, we who belong to the Lord, are the light of the world and others ought to see our good works and glorify our father, which is in heaven. We are representatives and ambassadors of Christ. Therefore, we must not continue to look back and go back to the things, ways, actions, and behaviors of our past. But we must press forward toward the mark of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. Looking back oftentimes cause us to lose focus and even compromise our very own freedoms, which explains God's word in Galatians 5 and 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free from sin and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. To look back is to go back to that from which you have been delivered. So keep your eyes, ears, and whole heart 
looking forward and pressing onward toward all of God's many promises and plans for your life. At times, the punches of this life can knock you to the floor. People can hurt your heart so bad that only God can restore. The pain of rejection or lack of affection can leave you in despair. That you pray hard and whisper, even pinch yourself to search, is God still here? The trials of life and the weights that come can weigh us so far down that we sit in silence with a prayer in our hearts. Please God, just stay around. I want to remind you, in spite of circumstances, where to affix your eyes. God is with you through it all, so you will not fall. Divine presence and protection The prize, never return to a matter, situation, or even a good, good friend from whom you had to pray your way out after stress and trouble begin. Stop looking back toward this and that that almost took you out through the troubles we face with his all-sufficient grace, his sure protection beyond the shadow of a doubt. Times he held you up, even removed a bitter cup when you might have been at fault. So you understood that his grace and his good are all priceless and cannot be bought. Know that looking back is a sign of lack in our knowledge and wisdom, no doubt. Must keep our eyes and whole heart pressing forward once we know what salvation's about. To look backwards or turn away from your press is unwise to say the least. We must fully understand that God's pleasure and plan is to be strength wherever we're weak. To turn away from our press today is a posture we cannot afford. Seek him day and night with your whole heart and might to make your salvation reassured. Simply don't look back at all the sin you successfully turned away, but keep your eyes on the prize and your mind made up. God is with you every day. He promised never to leave or forsake, but grant your heart's desire. Look unto the hills for every promise he'll fulfill. God will keep you uplifted, encouraged, and inspired. Well, family, this is number 127 of Faith, Family, and Fundamentals with Fran. I urge you, don't look back. Don't look away, but look And lean into God and his many promises toward you. David said, forget not his many benefits. As God has promised that all things, all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. I want you to walk in the fullness and newness of life once you've had an honest encounter with the Lord. I am a living witness that a single encounter with the Lord will change your entire life and you will never, ever be the same again. It is my prayer that you will press forward and toward the mark of the high calling that is in Christ Jesus. If we start toward God's kingdom and decide we want to even take a peek back, God's word has said we would not be fit for the kingdom as we must remain kingdom-minded in order to keep pressing forward. You see, looking back infers a desire for the things that we have left behind and to even think on matters from which we've been delivered is beneath us. We must press forward knowing that we have no desire to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Because God's undying love shown through the death of his only son has freed each of us from sin. Allow me to remind you to stop running back to the thing, person, or matter that you had to pray your way out of. That situation from which others may have very well had to pray and fast for your deliverance. I pray that you look up. Focus on those things ahead, placing your eyes on the Lord. But don't you dare, don't you dare look back. God bless each of you. On a separate note, 
I need your prayers as I will be undergoing my cataract surgery in less than 12 hours. Perhaps I will be done with a successful surgery by the time you hear this week's podcast. But I still solicit your prayers for a speedy, successful, God-ordained recovery. I already know that a group of intelligent, well-trained ophthalmologists will physically conduct the surgery. But I am well aware of the fact that only God can do the work. You see, those people can do nothing except God allows it to be so. Please trust and believe that I know where all of my help comes from. All of my help, my provisions and protection comes from the Lord and I praise him for it all. Most of all, please pray that all goes well and my vision is markedly improved as a result. In advance, I bid you God's blessings, mercy and favor. Continue to press forward and don't you dare, don't you dare look back. Please don't forget to say something on my Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter page. You can listen to me on Amazon Music or YouTube as well. I welcome your questions, comments, critiques, and suggestions on topics you'd like to explore. Who knows? You might just end up being a guest on an upcoming broadcast. Remember, I'm just a regular girl navigating this diverse world. I'm looking forward to each of you. Until then, take care of yourself each other, and stay blessed. The Faith, Family, and Fundamentals with Fran podcast is a production of the Castropolis Podcast Network. Log on to castropolis.net.